Welcome to video three in my series on scanning and modeling and 3D printing. The idea on this is we want to build a device that will hold two stream decks and one trackball and fit nicely into the side of my Resolve mini panel. In video one, we scanned the Resolve mini panel and we got that scan into Fusion 360 where it was all prepped and ready to build the shape. In video two, we built the box that will hold two stream decks. We sent it to the printer for a test print and this is the test print we ended up with. In video three I've decided I don't like this and I'm going to almost start again and I warned you I might do this. I decided this shape doesn't have enough curves in it to sit next to the mini panel and if I'm going to scan the mini panel I might as well try to use the shape of the mini panel to build this box more precisely. So today we're going to go back into the scanning process. I've got a couple of different ideas on things to do within the scanning process that will help everything else down the line go a little more smoothly. And you'll see what I mean by that as the video progresses. But let's start by going back in and rescanning the mini panel. So a few differences here. First of all, I put the mini panel on a cutting board. That will help me see the bottom a little clearer as well as it will give me a plane, hopefully, to help me position it within Fusion 360. I've just masked off the entire side that I want to get scanned, and I've added some Play-Doh to help give a little bit of perspective between the top of the panel and the bottom of the panel, and by putting it on the wood in front, it gives me perspective between the wood and the bottom corner of the panel. So let's see if this scans a little neater for me. So we've got the first scan coming in here. I've sped up a lot of the scanning uh, visual that you're looking at just to speed the process a little bit. And we can see the board is coming in, the side of the panel is coming in, and one of my plasticine, or one of my Play-Doh, it's actually Play-Doh, is on top of the panel is coming in. So we'll just do a little twist on the panel itself and do another scan. In the end, I probably did seven or eight different scans. And this one turned out really good on the panel, so we're going to add that into the mix. And I'm just going to start really spinning through these scans now, and you can see how it really starts coming together. Um, the, even the breadboard, you know, it really does add the dimensions. It just, it's just more information for the scanner to decide this goes with this, this goes with that, as all these individual scans get put together. And right there we're really looking like we've got a pretty solid side of this panel. Again, that I think that wood plane will help a lot when we get into Fusion 360 to orient it in the correct world. Now after I've done a few of the side scans, I decided I should probably change the angle of the scanner a little bit. And that's what the advantage of putting it on a tripod does for you. It just allows you to change the height, the angle, without physically turning the panel. And I'll go a little lower, try to get a little bit more of the underside on that resolve panel. It's still hidden fairly well because of the angle that it goes at. So now we're just going to do a little bit of a garbage cleanup, get rid of some of the excess that is not needed in Fusion 360. I'm going to keep a little bit of that breadboard out front because again I want that plane to help me orient it. Pretty much anything else that is not the side of the panel can go. I scanned the top and I didn't really need to but it helped me to kind of decide where that corner was. It did get a little confusing looking at some of these angles as to what was rounding forward what was rounding backwards so again just having that breadboard on here has really helped me to decide where this thing should sit in the real world uh, we did a mesh we did an unwater tight mesh and we ended up with a pretty nice looking thing again a little bit of the breadboard there i did a very quick test here because there is a add a plane function within the scanning program so I told it that that item is a plane I wanted to know if that would come through into Fusion 360 unfortunately it did not 
OK, so that scan is now in Fusion 360, and here it is. Now, it didn't come in quite this clean. This is, uh, again, with me doing some twisting and turning to get it onto a flat plane. But by scanning it with on top of that breadboard, that gave me the plane information I needed to have something to line this up with. So you can see here I still have that one section of the breadboard. That tells me where the ground is, and that is allowing me to get this angle now correct on the ground. So I'm going to actually try to build this angle into the box. We'll see. That's I don't know how to do it yet. We'll figure that out when we get to that step. But this also gives me a nice shape. I now know everything that I can see is the object because of how I had taped it off. So we're going to go and do the same thing we did last time. We're going to make a uh, spline shape and we are going to draw this entire shape out and then we'll extract that into our new piece. Now again, how we handle this We'll have to see, but first let's get the basic shape down. So ramp speed full ahead. I think we're running about 1600% speed here as we draw this shape. One more time, my disclaimer, this is not a Fusion 360 tutorial and you do not want me giving you a Fusion 360 tutorial. But essentially I'm drawing a spline, I am bending it and turning it and adding points to get to the point where I feel I've got the shape of my scan as close as I can get it or I feel as close as it needs to be for the next stage of the process. Once we have that shape drawn we can now extrude that shape to create our fake mini panel. I'll just set this to new body and there is our updated shape to use as a basis to build next to. Now it does look like we have to square up our scan a little bit to help with this, just to make sure we're all happy with each other. Uh, I did originally when I brought it in, I got it nice and flat on the base plane, but not on this axis. So I'm just going to square this up to make sure both items are relative to each other. And once we have the things all lined up together, we can now nice and easily see our angle on the underside of the panel. So I'm going to build another box and we will use this as a cutter. So I'm going to line it up with the angle and then at some point I will use this to cut away this angle from my proxy or my fake resolve panel. But we're not going to do that quite yet. First, I'm going to take my fake panel as it is, and I'm going to project it out the other direction, and this will now be the basis for our box. Now, you remember last time I just built square boxes. I uh, decided, well, why wouldn't I just build a box that's almost an exact shape of the panel? So we, have, we now have a fake panel that I've turned off visually, and we have another version of that shape that comes the other direction and that box I'm going to position my stream decks in. So just the usual alignment, shifting, spinning, getting the um, edges all lined up as best I can, leaving my two millimeter edge and cutting away the panel. This gives me a much more visual way of seeing how these boxes will fit into this shape using the full shape of the panel as well kind of wish I had thought of this on day one, but that's live and learn, right? Let's get the second one in position here. Maybe the first one was a little low, so I dropped it, or a little low, so I dropped it up, brought it up a little bit. 
and position the second one, line it up, move it over my two mils, do the cutaway, and we are now left with a much more interesting looking box, much more customized looking box to sit next to this panel. Now we do have to shrink in this side. It has to be two millimeters away from our edge as well. So I just dragged it back, moved it back two millimeters. Uh, pretty simple on that front. Uh, the front of it will at some point hold a trackball, but right now I'm just going to leave it as it is. We'll probably lop it off for our test print. And same technique now to make our shell a little more hollow. We modified our face down. We are now looking at the analysis of that so that we can hollow out the rest of this solid plastic. A uh, very similar technique to what I did in the last video. So if you uh, are a little lost as to what I'm doing here, just go back and look at that last video. It's the exact same process. It's a different shape this time, but it's the exact same process. Just deciding how much of this we should try to hollow out on this first step. And as we'll just maneuver around, get everything lined up, try to keep our shell to be nice and solid on the edges and again empty in the middle. And now that we have that we can do a cut from here, use one tool to cut away from the other item, and that'll leave us with a nice hollow shell that we can send to the printer. But before we send this to the printer, we do still have to do our USB cable cutouts. And once again, as we look at our analysis, everything looks clean. The cable cutout, same technique. Actually, I have still have the cutting devices kicking around, so we will line those up. We'll do the top on each of the stream deck holes and another channel through the bottom for the trackball cable to come out. We did measure this time. We need these to be centered on about the 60 millimeter mark in from the side of the panel. So hopefully this time these cables will actually line up properly. This one I'm just going to put on a bit of an angle because I think we don't have to cut the whole top off. I think we can have the cable go down at an angle. And that might be something we have to look at for the top one as well. And then the USB channel going through the bottom. And there's the shape. We're going to send this to the printer. Oh, actually, before we send that to the printer, I forgot we want to try to put the angle on the side that connects up with the panel to match the angle of the panel. So how do we get, now that we have a nice flat side here, how do we get that to be on an angle? Well, you remember we did build a cutaway box before we uh, got into this stage. So we're going to take that cutaway box and we are going to put it next to our fake panel cut away the edge of that panel at the correct angle. So that's my fake panel with the angle cut off of it. My box on the other side, we then will take, draw a shape to fill in that angle. Connect that up with the box, join it all together, and that should leave us a box with this little piece of angle stuck to it now. So we're going to just do a sketch that will fill in this uh, uh, this angle, this triangle. Tried a couple of other items, but it looks like just manually drawing that shape is going to be the way to work it. So we've got a sketch. We're going to extrude it both to front and to back to create a new body to fill in that gap. So there is the shape, and we'll just change this from a cutter to a new body. 
and we can at this point now turn off the fake mini panel. Now to get that new triangular shape to be the shape of the panel, I'm going to tape, take the side shape of the panel and I'm going to project it this way towards the new triangle. Bring it out as a cutter, but not just a cutter, we're going to use what's called the intercept. So it's going to remove everything except where these two shapes intercept each other. That takes my triangle now into the shape of the panel. So we've combined the box and the triangle into a new object and now we'll take this uh, edge that needs to be smoothed out a little bit and we'll add a fillet to it and that'll help to hopefully mix that corner in a little bit and now we have an item we can finally send to the printer. Now in order to do our test print we have to do the same technique we did last time. First thing I do, I'm gonna, I've duplicated this box and I'm going to now cut off the tip of it because I don't need to print all of that right now. The trackball section is not ready to go. We are then going to cut off a section, a huge section from the right hand side to the left hand side because I just want to print this test to check the angle on the left hand side that goes underneath the panel as well as the height and perhaps a little bit of the hole that the stream, back, stream Deck sits in to make sure it is still the right size. So we really don't need to print all this other stuff right now. I just want to get a very basic amount of this printed out. This is what I want to send to the printer to see how we are doing so far. So we did our test print and here it is. It is looking pretty good. We've got a nice curve on our shape here that follows quite nicely the mini panel. Yeah, it doesn't look like it was, it came out of a factory, but the shape is pretty nice. I think once this whole thing is built out, it will look quite good. The shape on the side angle here doesn't go all the way to the panel. There is still a gap there, but I do have my angle cutting underneath it a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna fill in that gap entirely because that will end up being a lot of wasted plastic. Same thing with the angle on the top. I could angle that a little bit in. I'll have to think about whether or not I want to do that. But again, to get it to hug the panel all the way down and through would be a lot of wasted plastic. And I don't think I'm interested in spending that much plastic on this device. There's going to be enough to build the form of it. And I think once it's all done and painted, I don't think that will matter that much. So where do we go from here? Next video, we are going to build the trackball section of this. We're going to scan the trackball. We're going to build a box for it. We're going to combine these boxes all together and see what we come up with. We're getting pretty close to being able to print this whole thing out as one big device. So I hope you've stuck with us so far and I hope you come back for the next video. Thanks for watching.